The eight days of Hanukkah start on the 25th of Kislev. It commemorates a miracle which occurred when the Jews triumphed over the Greeks in war. In this case, Jews refers to religious Jews in what was very much a religious war. Greeks here means people who accepted Greek ideas. In fact, the Greeks themselves were not particularly involved. Rather, the antagonists were the successors to Alexander the Great and Hellenized Jews who were their allies. Alexander was more or less a Byzantine who were great enthusiasts of Greek culture. When he died, one of his generals, Antiochus, took control of the West Asian part of his empire. The war was basically a battle of ideas. The religious Jews said that man should be ruled by the soul. The Hellenists said the intellect was supreme and pretty much denied the existence of the soul. Antiochus led the Greeks. The Jews were led by the high priest Matisyahu and his five sons. His firstborn was Judah Maccabee, who served as general. Maccabee means hammer, and the idea was that this band of Maccabees would pound the enemy into submission. It was in fact a seesaw battle that ended when a femme fatale, Judith, seduced and decapitated the enemy general. She gave him cheese to stimulate thirst, then gave him wine to induce sleep. When he, when he fell asleep, she chopped off his head and brought it to Jerusalem. With that, the Greeks panicked and fled. For this reason, it is traditional to eat dairy products on Hanukkah. After the war, the Kohanim wanted to perform the ritual of lighting the menorah in the temple. They found only one day's supply of designated pure oil. Unfortunately, all of the Jews were ritually unclean because as soldiers they had come in contact with a dead body. Removing the stain of death could only be done through the ritual of the red heifer, which required seven days. After that, they could make the oil for the menorah according to the highest standards. With one day's supply of pure oil, they lit the menorah in the sacred chamber. There is a debate as to exactly what they did. Some say they lit the whole jar, jar and miraculously it lasted the full eight days. Others say they divided the jar into eighths and lit one part of it each day. Miraculously, the small amount burnt the entire day, and that happened every day until they had proper oil. This was amazing. The Maccabees had won a big military victory. In addition, God was not only declaring that he exists, but also that the religious Jews were right. It was both a military and a moral victory for the, the faith. The story was recorded in works such as the Talmud, Josephus, and two books of the Christian Bible, 1st and 2nd Maccabees. To show off this great victory, it was declared a mitzvah to light a candle to proclaim a big miracle happened here. The Gemara explains that the best way to perform this mitzvah is to place the menorah by the door of one's house on the outside. If one dwells in an apartment above the first floor, he places it in the window facing the street. But in times of danger, it is sufficient to place it on the table. Rabbam remarks that if this is done, another candle is required. Rashi explains that this is done so that the Hanukkah candles will be recognized as such. 
Other commentaries opine that to make ordinary use of the light of the Hanukkah candles is in poor taste and we are only permitted to look at them alone. The Kitzer Shulchan Aruch, following the words of other important works, brings more fine practices. When outside, the candles should be on the left side of the door because the mezuzah is on the right in order that one should, passing through should be surrounded by mitzvahs. The candle should be placed between 12 inches and 40 inches above the ground to demonstrate it was not placed there for light. Just the same, one is still credited with a mitzvah if it is above 40 inches. But if it is above 30 feet, one has not satisfied their obligation as it is too high to be seen. If a person lives in an apartment so high that people cannot see the candles in their window, then better to place them near the door. He also advocated using a silver menorah, if one could afford it, to beautify the mitzvah. In places like Meya Sharim, many people light their Hanukkah candles by the door, and some of them succeed in following even the smallest detail. I'd say that most people light the menorah in their window. Others will have it in a dignified part of their home, often in an ornate glass box. Many have beautiful Hanukkiyas made out of pure silver. For children, they may be very simple, a machined sheet of folded tin. It seems that a spiritual inquiry is occurring among the Haredim with the question, where do you light your Hanukkiyah, as frequently. For the dogmatic, the preferred place is in the door to one's apartment. The issue as to whether the hall of the, uh, in an apartment building is a public thoroughfare is a troublesome question. But for those who love the beauty of the menorah, the choice is in the apartment. The power of the Hanukkah miracle remains strong and the victory over the Maccabees is continuing. Not too long ago, Chabad declared victory over the communists when they sh showed in their weekly Devar Torah a line of cars crowned with a menorah parked in the shadow of the Kremlin. The difference today is that we do not have enemies that we can gloat over like we had 2,000 years ago. Very many non-Jews like the holiday, especially its message. What is stronger today is the fundamental appreciation of the miracle. Because of that, we want to see the lives ourselves. Close by, in a glorious faction, for that, many Jews have a large, beautiful Hanukkiah prominently placed in their living room to proudly publicize the miracle. Thank you.